All right, so the last part of this is essentially combining the two formulas that we just finished learning. So if you recall, when we looked at the number calculation, right, so let's say we wanted to solve for the number of anything, right, number of atoms, we would take the mole value and multiply it by Avogadro's constant. If we wanted to solve for the mass of something, right, we took the mole value and we would multiply it by the molar mass. So sometimes what you're going to see is very common, actually, is you're given one thing that is in this concept, but have to transfer and solve for something in the other concept or vice versa. So the only thing that's really common to both is the mole. So essentially, what does that mean? If you know the moles, you can go actually with any of these formulas. So if you want to solve for the number, well, if we get the, the number of moles, we can actually plug it in over here and solve for the number of atoms. Or vice versa, we can solve for the mass once we have the mole value from this formula. So again, this is going to be an example of a multi-step problem. So let's take a look. We'll do an example together, and then we'll have you try one out as well. Okay, so we're looking for what is the mass of a sample. So we want the mass. But they're telling us that there are 5.67 times 10 to the 24 molecules of cobalt-2 chloride. So this is actually our N value. 5.67 times 10 to the 24 molecules. And that's for cobalt to chloride. Now, you probably want to know, how are you going to know what it is? You have to look at the, at the units, okay? So molecules, number, or if this was atoms or formula units or ions, obviously, if you had grams, that would be a mass value. So it's very important to get comfortable with the units that are involved here. So if we go back to this formula, we want to solve for mass. Well, we need moles and we need molar mass. There is no information in this question about moles, but we have the number of molecules. So once we have that, we can solve for the number of moles. So we have to solve for moles first, and then we can solve for our final mass. So let's do it. So to solve for moles, we're going to do N over... Na. Then afterwards, to find mass, we're going to do moles times the molar mass. So we can show this either before or after, but eventually we will have to solve for the molar mass, so we might as well do that. So it's one cobalt plus two chlorine atoms, so this is 129.80 grams per mole. So we'll be ready to go once we have the mole number. Okay, so we're going to do, remember, scientific notation in your calculator, always put the brackets over 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay, so over here we get, let's take a look, 5.67 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay, so we get here 9.4186 moles. Now, I am not going to be rounding this to sig figs yet. Remember, it's only your final, final answer that we're going to do that with. So we're going to keep this as is because now we're going to plug it in to solve for the mass. So you don't want to round prematurely because then what's going to happen is you're going to have a totally different answer from the final answer because you're, you're going to round too much. Okay, so we're doing mass times molar mass. I'm just plugging in the molar mass from before, 129.8. So we get here, the mass is 1222.535 grams. Okay, so now we have to look for sig figs. So up at the top, 
we have three significant digits, so we have to round this to three significant digits. So this can go I, one of two ways, right? They're the same thing. I can say one, two, two, zero grams, or I can do 1.22 times 10 to the three grams. Both of these would be correct. Okay, so really we're not learning anything new in this last part. We're just combining the two different types of formulas that we learned. And then, of course, you always have to solve for moles first before you can shift to the second formula. So give this next one a try. How many molecules of iodine chloride, so iodine chloride is just one iodine and one chlorine, are contained in 2.74 times 10 to the negative 1 grams of a sample? So give this a try. All right, so let's take a look. So we're looking for the number of iodine chloride molecules. We have the mass value, 2.74 times 10 to the negative one grams for iodine chloride. So we eventually want to get to, um, you know, N is equal to uh, N times Na, but we first have to solve for moles because we don't have enough information to solve for the molecules yet. So moles is going to be mass over the molar mass. So molar mass, right, we have one iodine, one chlorine. So we get a molar mass of 162.35 grams per mole. Sorry, there's a train going by. <laughs> okay, so we have mass over the molar mass. So we're going to solve for our mole value. So 2.74 times 10 to the negative 1 divided by 162.35. So we get here moles of 1.6877 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. And remember, we're not done yet. So we're not going to round this. But we can now solve for um, the number of molecules because we have our mole value. So remember, it's going to be moles times Avogadro's number. And this, when you're doing the calculations, right, we know that this goes into brackets. So we're going to take that and we'll multiply by so we have 1.6877 times 10 to the negative 3 times 6.02 times 10 to the exponent 23. Okay, so we should have here uh, 1, 1.015995 times 10 to the 21 molecules but we, we know we're going to have to round this. So our, our number up here has three sig figs. So down here, we'll have to round this to three sig figs. So this is going to be 1.02 times 10 to the 21 molecules. Okay, so really, uh, at the end of the day for this lesson, we've learned two formulas, how to rearrange them and how they interconnect. Now you have to practice these problem solving uh, questions or else there's no way of kind of, it's really easy to look at somebody doing these and say, okay, I get it, I'll just plug in the numbers. But you have to get comfortable with reading this and understanding what formulas apply, how to go about doing that. Uh, it will get more complex. We're gonna add on to these things as we go on throughout this unit and throughout this course. So um, practice makes perfect. So we're going to practice our mole calculations.